we got a busy Monday show for you here on Locked On Lions, including talking backup quarterbacks, a lot of ridiculous trade things out there about the Lions, and we got to recap the weekend as well. There's a Monday show. Let's do it. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is a Monday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's a Monday, January 23rd, and a Tuesday, January 24th. Thanks for making us your first listen, your first watch, if you're checking us out on YouTube. And we always appreciate you, the listener and the viewer here on Locked On Lions, as the Detroit Lions still getting a lot of buzz, even though the team has been off now for the last two weeks and the season being over, but we're getting ready for the draft. Got Senior Bowl coming up. We're chasing down Jim Nagy to have him on pretty soon. Andrew Siciliano likely this week as well. Locked on Lions today on a Monday is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. Please follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Locked On Lions, the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page if you're a Facebook person, and also again the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Your comments are always welcome uh, on the uh, YouTube chat there as well. All right, on the show today, Lions special teams get some love. We will explain coming up. Also, the weekend games. We got to get into what took place on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Some backup quarterback talk that had to do with what happened this weekend. I'll explain coming up. The Dallas Cowboys did something that was absolutely classless. And you'd never see, I I wouldn't think you'd ever see the Lions do something like this. And uh, some folks putting out uh, some trade rumors with the Lions and some questions, which I think are absolutely ridiculous. We'll do that as well here on Locked On Lions. Again, Matt Derry with you. Thanks for uh, checking us out today and being with us. Uh, all week right here on Locked On Lions. All right, where should we start? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we can get into the weekend real fast. There was nothing that really stood out to me about any of these games this weekend where I said, oh my goodness, this was unbelievable, or we had to talk about something uh, from the weekend. I thought Saturday's games were pretty much a snooze. There was nothing all that exciting about them. Uh, Jacksonville hung with Kansas City for a little while. Saturday night was all Eagles. Philadelphia, to me, is clearly the best team in this tournament. Um, Niners-Cowboys had some had some cachet last night, um, but nothing all that special. And then the Bills and Bengals was certainly intriguing with the snow, and Snow Burrow playing great. Cincinnati is back in the AFC Championship game again. Um if there's people out there that think Josh Allen sucks and Sean McDermott all of a sudden uh, stopped knowing how to coach, I mean, it's a one-and-done situation. Buffalo has had a really good run, really good run. But I, I will say this about the weekend, and this is something that our crack research staff brought up to me um, as well over the weekend. But of the teams who played this weekend, you had Chad Henney get some very valuable minutes for the Chiefs and the backup quarterback role when Patrick Mahomes got hurt, and then Mahomes came back in the game. Uh, you had Cooper Rush didn't play in the game, certainly over the weekend uh, last night in the Dallas loss to the Niners, although there's some uh, Cowboy fans that were, are probably saying the pride of Central Michigan should have played over Dak Prescott, which is dumb. But Cooper Rush had a hand in Dallas having the successful season that they did. Also, Brock Purdy of course, is a third-string quarterback. You call him a backup, whatever. Jimmy Garoppolo was the backup to Trey Lance in San Francisco. And here are the 49ers now playing for a chance to get to the Super Bowl as they will play next Sunday at 3 o'clock at Philadelphia in the NFC Championship game. Two of the four teams left standing will be impacted by their backup quarterbacks. So... I started to think about this 
and I'm not going to go nuts over it. This is not some giant uh, rip job of Brad Holmes. But the Lions for the last couple of years have neglected their backup quarterback spot. This year, Nate Sudfeld was the backup, but yet other than coming in in a couple of late stages of games, blowout games, mostly wins for the Lions, Nate Sudfeld did not have a hand at all in what the Lions did this season. But if you see where I'm going with this, Dallas had a very competent backup in Cooper Rush who won them games while Dak Prescott was hurt. Chad Henney came into Saturday's game. All right, Chiefs and Jags tied at seven. Mahomes gets hurt. And all the 40-year-old former Michigan Wolverine Chad Henney did was take the Chiefs down the field 90-plus yards for a touchdown drive. Chad Henney is a competent, viable backup in the National Football League. All right, Brock Purdy is a third stringer, third stringer who was Mr. Irrelevant, drafted dead last by the Niners. He's backing up Jimmy Garoppolo, who backed up Trey Lance. The Niners definitely addressed that position. And now Purdy all of a sudden is this giant star. So one thing that I would look at for Brad Holmes to do, based off of, off of this a little bit, my voice has been cracking for days, battling, uh, fighting stuff off here with my sinuses. But, but what I'm saying is keep an eye out for this, this coming off season with the Lions. I do not believe that Brad Holmes is going to neglect the backup quarterback spot like he has over the last couple of years. I think Brad Holmes thought his first off season that he would bring Tim Boyle in from the Packers and Tim Boyle would be good and would be sustainable, decent, good showing in the preseason, and somebody that the Lions would feel like they could be comfortable with winning a game or two when Jared Goff got injured. Now, this year, Jared Goff stayed healthy. Jared Goff had a monster year, played very, very well, and played in all 17 games. The year before, if you recall, Jared Goff played through some major injuries, including in the Pittsburgh game where he couldn't even throw the ball. Um, And then I think what sat out the Cleveland game that Tim Boyle started. The Lions have had issues with the backup quarterback spot over the last couple of years. Again, we didn't really see Nate Sudfeld play, but just I'm making a point that I think the Lions will address that situation. Now, let me piggyback that off of something that I saw over the weekend. And I'm not going to say where it came from because I don't want to rip those that individual. And this is not personal but I saw this on two different Lions websites about the Lions trading for somebody. And this is ridiculous and not going to happen. We'll do that um, coming up next. I want to do that. Uh, But first, we talked about prize picks. Let me talk about prize picks yet again. Daily fantasy made easy and fun. All right. NBA tonight. You got the Pistons playing the Bucks. Uh, You got the... um, Games this coming weekend for the AFC and NFC title game. Make it more interesting by playing prize picks. It's entries, it's daily fantasy, it's player projections, and it is so much fun. All right, you pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You don't compete against other people, just against the projections available. Like I said, NBA, you can do it. NHL, college basketball, which is going on right now. Women's college hoops, any of that is right there for you at prizepicks.com or on the app. Safe and fast withdrawals and entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Uh, less. Just download the app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKDOWN. So if you put in $100, they give you $100 back. If you put in $50, they give you $50 for free. Don't forget to enter promo code LOCKDOWN at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, so I see this over the weekend. And this is ridiculous, all right? This is not happening. Headline, should the Lions trade for Trey Lance? No. Why? Why would the Lions want to do anything to stunt the growth that we have seen, upward growth, from Jared Goff. Why? It would be one thing to add a veteran 
upgraded backup quarterback. But Jared Goff is the starting quarterback for your Honolulu Blue and Silver Warriors. If you bring Trey Lance in here and trade for him, number one, you're going to have to trade draft capital. Number two, you don't want to do that. Number three, then the whispers would start. Oh, Trey Lance has been a starter in the NFL. Trey Lance was the future of the Niners. Trey Lance has been injured, so, but Trey Lance is going to want to go somewhere and get an opportunity to start. There are plenty of places that are starting quarter that starting quarterbacks are needed in this league. Tons of them. New Orleans, the Jets, Tampa Bay once Brady leaves, the Raiders right now. There's so many places where teams are going, we need a quarterback. Heck, we watched it last night with Dallas, and I'll explain that in a second. People are saying, Dak's got to go. All right, well, who's going to start? Cooper Rush is a backup. No offense to my Chippewa fans there. Should the Lions trade for Trey Lance? No. Here's the other thing. You got Jared Goff playing good football. You've got Jared Goff comfortable with the system. You've got Jared Goff's offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson, back. Why would you want to add any kind of distraction with a Trey Lance in here? Oh, Trey Lance. So Jared Goff plays poorly. I'm not saying you have to have crap at backup quarterback, which is what the Lions have kind of had the last couple of years. It's been not good. Whether it was David Blau, whether it was Mr. August, Tim Boyle, Nate Sudfeld. I would like to see them upgrade the position at backup quarterback. But Trey Lance, no, you're not trading for somebody that wants to be a starter and is really, really young and was like a top five pick and is ready to quarterback his own team. The only reason Trey Lance isn't in San, is going to be in San Francisco anymore is because the guy behind him, Brock Purdy, never loses. He wins every game. How do the Niners walk away from Brock Purdy now, who has led them to like nine straight wins or eight straight wins or whatever it is, and a spot in the NFC title game? Now, this Sunday, Brock Purdy could stain the sheets in Philly. He might. It's possible. And then people are going to say, oh, well, they got to bring Garoppolo back. Oh, they got to bring back Trey Lance. But the Lions are not an outfit that should be trading for Trey Lance and starting up any kind of quarterback controversy. Because that's what you do. If you trade draft capital to go acquire a quarterback, you're doing that, I'm just hypothetic, hypothetical, to get your future guy. But you don't want to get your future guy just yet. You've got Jared Goff for two more years. And he's winning, and he's young, and he's playing well. Why would you disrupt what you have right now? That's my point. So, no, I'm not trading for Trey Lance. I'm not doing that. Am I upgrading the backup quarterback? Yes. I would sign Cooper Rush. I don't even know Cooper Rush's contract status. He's an upgrade from Nate Sudfeld and Tim Boyle and David Blau. But I would not be trading for Trey Lance. Now, as far as Dallas goes, did anybody see the Cowboys tweet? Official Twitter page, at Dallas Cowboys, last night at near midnight, at 11.48 p.m. It was a picture of Dak Prescott looking at the um, iPad or whatever is on the sidelines. And it said, quote, Dak Prescott, this is from the official Cowboys Twitter, the team Twitter, quote, Dak Prescott gave away the ball twice in the narrow loss to the 49ers in a matchup the Cowboys had a chance to win if they didn't, again, generate self-inflicted wounds. And then an article from DallasCowboys.com. How disgusting is that? You're blaming your quarterback on Twitter. Awful. Absolutely awful. I don't know who runs the Lions social media. I think they do a pretty good job. I'm not sitting here going, oh, I like this team's social media better than someone else's. Lions social media after the Packer game was fire. It was great. But my goodness, to blame your quarterback from the team social media where whoever's behind that keyboard is an employee of the team is classless and disgusting. Dak Prescott didn't play well. 
You want to blame Dak Prescott, that's fine. If there's a columnist that works for the DallasCowboys.com or something, wants to write a story, that's fine. But on social media, talking about how Dak Prescott gave the ball away and the Cowboys had their chances is not fair. And that's really, really a bad look. Really bad look. Some of these social medias go over the top to be homeristic and not object. I don't, I wouldn't ever think that the team's website would be trashing their star quarterback, their franchise quarterback. And if Dallas wants to move on from him and Jerry Jones ordered the code red and told social media to do that, you don't post something like that. It's a bad, bad look. Really, really bad look. Um, Special teams for the Lions got some nice love um, over the weekend by a guy who rates the special teams like this is what he does. We're going to talk about that coming up next. But big news, everybody. Look on your screens if you're watching on Locked On Lions YouTube. FanDuel has joined the group here at Locked On. We are so excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. Folks, FanDuel is with us. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, just sign up at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. How amazing is this that FanDuel's with us? Everybody's on FanDuel. FanDuel is the best. The best. FanDuel is all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. All right? So I looked at the spreads this weekend. How about, uh, what was it? It was... Um, Bengals opened up as like a one-point favorite in Kansas City. People love Cincinnati already to do it again to the Chiefs. Check it all out at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use, too, if you want to use the apps. Football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner, of the NFL. So there's a lot of good things that happened this year with the Detroit Lions. And one of them was their special teams. Now, the kicking situation, place kicking was kind of a a roller coaster at times. But in the end, Michael Badgley did well enough that he should probably get an opportunity to at least compete for the job next year. I know there are many Lions fans out there like, we got to get money moody from Michigan. And that's fine. If Jake Moody were to get drafted late, Lions have a bunch of draft capital. Why not? Guy's pretty darn good, and I think he's going to be good in the pros. Heck, the Dallas Cowboys should probably have a, a sh- Jerry Jones should probably be getting an email from Matt Weiss about Jake Moody. Sorry, bad joke. Anyway, Lions special teams. Where did they rank amongst the best and worst in the NFL this year? Well, Rick Gosselin who is a longtime NFL writer based out of Dallas, does his annual Rick Gosselin NFL special teams rankings. And this is like what Rick Gosselin does. This is like every year this is the Bible for special teams. Rick Gosselin does all of these uh, analytics and he looks at everything and he puts it in a computer and outspits the best special teams and the worst special teams in the league. This season, your Detroit Lions finished top 10 in the NFL in special teams, led by special teams coordinator Dave Phipp. This is coverage. This is blocking. This is everything. Kicking, punting, the whole deal. Number one special teams in the league this year with 255 points. You want to go with less points in this uh, situation as to how they grade um, uh, the situation. So the Houston Texans were number one with 255 points. Number two were the Seattle Seahawks with 269 and a half points. Number three, the Baltimore Ravens with 272 points. Number four, the Carolina Panthers. Um, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. 
Did I mess this up completely? Do, 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 do. Hold on. I got to get this right. Hold on a second. All right. Hold on. Do, 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 do. All right. Sorry. All right. I got this right. My bad. Texans were number one. Seahawks number two. Baltimore number three, 272 points. I was reading something wrong, so rewind, start over. Carolina was number four, 277 and a half points. Buffalo number five. And the Detroit Lions, number six, 292 and a half points. Chargers, Colts, Jets, and Falcons also made the top 10. Worst special teams in the league, ironically enough, came from hang on, a couple of playoff teams. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, I'm sorry, the Kansas City Chiefs at number 32, the Philadelphia Eagles at number 31, even though Jake Elliott is a very good uh, kicker, and the uh, Tampa Bay Bucks were third worst at 445. So there you go. So the Lions were a top six special teams this season. Now, Inside the 20 punts, actually, which is all part of the formula, the Lions finished dead last with just 14. League average was 25.4. So you throw that in the mix. Other than that, the Lions finished a top six. And again, the team that did the team that did the best uh, was the Houston Texans, ironically enough. But you got to give it up to Dave Phipp and the Lions special teams, who continue over the last few years. To do a great job in coverage, not allowing big plays in the punt return game or the kick return game. And the Lions kick return team and punt return team also was good. Now, if you remember, Khalif Raymond uh, was second team all pro this year for punt returns. Of course, he had the huge punt return for a touchdown in the win over the New York Jets in New York. So the only teams that had better special teams ranked by Rick Gossam were Buffalo, Carolina, Baltimore, Seattle, and Houston. So the Lions coming in at 292.5 points. So that's pretty cool. The Lions made the top 10 this season for special teams. And Dave Phipp has done a good job. Lions had some very successful fakes that work this year that are all part of the uh, concoction that Gosselin puts together. Now the biggest issue for them is going to be, can the Lions find themselves a consistent kicker for this coming season? Michael Badgley was the best they've had in their rotation of like nine kickers over the last two years. But Rick Gosselin, given the Lions a top 10 special teams, is uh, is good. And Dave Phipp will likely be back this year. I don't see any changes on this Lions staff unless Aaron Glenn gets a head coaching job with either the Colts or the Cardinals. We know Ben Johnson is staying. All right, thanks for making us your first listen and first watch here on a Monday edition of Locked On Lions. Right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, we are back again tomorrow.